let's go ahead and get started um because we're six minutes after the hour we do have quorum so we can go forward um i was not at the last meeting thank you pat for running it um if anyone needs the link to the previous meetings they are in the agenda um let me share the agenda link so it was in the invite um there you go if anyone has any questions concern about the minutes let us know um for the agenda today we seem to have the wiki docs and website as our main topics um but we do have some ongoing discussion i think that area used to be for no that's okay um some ongoing discussion about kernel sources and then we have some new issues and some previously existing issues before we get to sean um, and i do want to make sure we give sean enough time to discuss what he needs to discuss because that is the current status of sigs um so the wiki that was frozen this week yes so we are good to go with that um yes that's that. correct the wiki does send us the dog should point to the archive now fabian archived it earlier this week okay and it in fact does there are issues with the rewrite rules that i saw that in the ticket or in the email So we're not quite good on our frozen wiki as far as it's frozen. Corrected. It is frozen. It just has incorrect. The content's notes. there. So on this note, I think we still have some documentation around that tells people that the wiki is normative. Like I remember, for example, the see the, the guide to how to make a SIG at one point said that one of the requirements for SIGs is to keep a list of members on the wiki. They like we probably need to make some changes in that stuff. Yeah, we definitely need to go through because we tell people to go to the wiki for certain things. Um, and if we're telling people to update the wiki and it's no longer updatable, we should. Um, that is a good idea, Thomas, to track it in an issue. Oh, that's yeah. the other. Never mind. Um, but yeah, this is something that we probably want to track in an issue as well. As well? Um, okay. I love it so that we can keep track of what docs as we find them if we can't fix them right away that we can at least go back and fix them um i wish alexandra was here she had written up a really nice email about doc organization um, and that's part of the reason why i added this topic um it included basically not a system for the docs but a flow of the website and clicking from here to there so it's not necessarily everything being in the same location but like how we really like how sig.centos.org is and how it's been working so from the website if you click on create a sig or you know going to a sig you would then from that menu item click over to where something exists now and we definitely do need to clean up our documents and update them. And that leads us also to the website, which is the bigger problem of updating that and everything having a home and being linked, linkable from there. Oh, and I typed the wrong thing. Oh, very interesting. Okay, um, that second link is not the HackMD. Okay. Hang on. Do you want the link to the the, the minutes HackMD? I think that's it, yeah. Oh, you have it now, okay. Except if I hadn't clicked sure. off the HTTP part, okay. but um i think we're all thank you sean um i accidentally overwrote my hack md link when i was cutting and pasting it trying to i'm sorry but i posted the you use use amy's i'm sorry no i posted sure. the edit no I, i'm okay i think yours is more direct yeah but it might be the edit link but that's fine 
Okay. Any board members can edit it, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so without spending too much time on this, we really do need to put a priority on the revamps to the website that we want to do so that we can then do the doc and the wiki stuff we want to do. I think we start with the website and then go from there so that as we make changes, we can link to it from the new pretty website. Does anyone, I mean, I know from the SIG discussions and the wiki replacement discussions, we seem to be leaning towards markup. I vote for doing the MK docs thing that we use okay. in FocitoCentos.org because that seems to work well, uh, with the exception of uh, if we end up integrating the RHEL uh, docs, those use their own systems, so we should keep those as close as possible to the upstream. But for everything else, I think MK docs is the like least friction, least pain option here. Yeah, and I think that was one of the benefits of Alexandra's suggestion was because we can put those docs where we need to, keep them the way they need to be, and yeah. not enforce something else on them. Yeah, I really like that proposal for what it's worth. I, I couldn't reply on the list because I'm, I'm traveling this week and things were messy, but like that that is excellent and we should do that. So if anyone has any feelings for or against or suggestions to add to that, um, please try to keep the discussion in that mailing list thread. And if we need to, we can then convert it into a issue. Does anyone else have anything on wiki docs and the website? All righty then. Um, there was a note in last month's meeting notes to that we would have more information on the redistribution of rel kernel sources, which is why I carried this over. Um, being that I wasn't in last month's meeting and I really didn't see it in the video when I replayed it. Um, who was leading that discussion last month? Was that Brian? Because Brian's not here. Uh, it was a combination of the KMOD SIG and uh, myself and a little bit of Bex. It was Brian Bex who started on IRC. So I think I've been ping on IRC, so I added the point to be tracked. Uh, so so Ned told me that uh, it's fine that he would just like to keep it on the agenda to track it and know when there's updates. So yeah, I think uh, we, we don't have much more we can say today unless Bex has something to add. Bex has a shake of the head. I shook my head because I couldn't find my mute button. At this time, I don't have any further updates. Okay. Do we want to put this in an issue, a board issue to be tracked? I think it might be nice to have that so that once we arrive at what is happening, we have a place where it's written down that we looked at it rather than just sort of threw it at the wall and ignored it. It also would probably make the KMOD SIG people feel like they've been heard because okay. they've been actually kind of complaining on lists that everyone's been ignoring them for a little while now. Yeah, okay. I agree. Having something visible where we can like track state for this would be good. All right. Well, we will create an issue after this meeting. Um, Bex, I'll also you... put out for the record that the KMOD SIG folks are, are very welcome to come and talk to me. I don't actually know them personally, but I am not not I'm not ignoring them. I am just working what I've been asked to work by the board. Okay. Bex, do you want this assigned to you or do you have a better person to assign it to? For now, you're welcome to assign it to me okay. because I know that um, a lot of the folks who will need to act inside of Red Hat can't act until I come out with a final answer. Okay. All righty. So moving on to issues, we have number 118, which is a new issue. I have that noted. Um, decision needed for OpenCPE initiative on lists.centos.org. This was from IFA. Um, for the front end on lists. So they want an upgrade of the front end for the mailman basically so this is an 
ongoing discussion we've actually been having. Um, so, if I remember correctly, the last time we talked about this, we talked about trying to do something in alignment with Fedora, I believe. Um, but if somebody has the the like thing on record to refer to, that could probably be useful because it's been a while since we had this conversation. Yeah, I want to see if we already have another ticket for it. Didn't we have an infra ticket for that? I don't remember. I, I think we had a ticket somewhere, but I, I don't have it offhand. It might be an infra ticket now that I think of it, yeah. yeah. Um, but I know we discussed in the past using this course versus using the list, uh, yeah. whether to maintain a presence on the list and what to do from the technical side of things. Um, from a technical standpoint, my understanding is that Mailman is now in a position where it's packaged and everything, but someone still needs to run the infrastructure and all. Yeah. Evan's obviously... in the process of setting up a staging environment for the new Mailman system. So that is actually uh, underway. Um, like the, I think the, the idea was that if we go full on forums, then we need a new instance of our own and, and sitting inside of Fedora's instance isn't going to cut it because you can't, there's not a ton of flexibility for that in the first place. Um, but if we keep with the mailing list, I think the idea is that we take advantage of the fact that the uh, the mailman system that Fedora has deployed is actually multi-domain, and we would put list.centos.org in that system and, and unify the list infrastructure. Because there's not really a reason to run multiple instances when you can essentially make it transparent to people. Um, do you know, Neil, if on the Fedora side there's been some, like, formal decision on the long-term future of the billing list? There, so currently no. And the uh, to put it bluntly, um, most people have not been super happy about the experience of doing technical discussions on discourse in the first place. So I, I don't know where that's gonna, where that's gonna go. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm, it, it's a very messy situation right now. And um, I know that Matthew Miller in particular, like this is kind of his baby and he wants to push it as hard as it can go. But um, there's, there's not, a, not a lot of people on the, on the, the developer contributor side of Fedora, uh, not the, gosh, I want to say this without sounding bad, pejoratively bad, but like the people who do packaging work and, and like the, the, that particular crowd is not particularly interested in the discourse side of things, whereas a lot of the creative marketing, um, those kinds of folks have been a lot more interested in. So we've gotten to kind of a very interesting split in Fedora where a around a third of the community lives on discourse and the other two thirds don't. Um, and I don't, I don't know whether that's okay or not yet. Personally, I think that's actually fine. It's optimizing for the kinds of experiences people actually want, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. The, so the reason I, I was asking was because the pragmatic, one pragmatic course of action here could be that if we assume that the Fedora infrastructure will stay around for a while, it might just be to, okay, let's just move this stuff onto the Fedora infrastructure. Then there's just one, at least it's one thing. And then if and when in the future Fedora decides to sunset mailing lists, then we can like address this again and decide if CentOS really wants to keep mailing lists, we can move somewhere else. Or if we decide, we can decide to do something together at the same time. But like, mm, I don't know okay. if we're in a position to say to kill this through and through now. Um, I suspect that would be a bit like a bit more than we can chew as we are right now. And it sounded like from the CPE ticket that they wanted an answer somewhat quickly. So yeah, because of CentOS 7. Neil, um, is this comment that I'm putting in the ticket, ma the mailman that Fedora is testing can be configured multi-domain? They're testing it, right? It's not a final decision? Well, the current mailman that we have now in Fedora, the one that's currently deployed, also is multi-domain. That is okay. a mailman three feature that right now Fedora's mailing list has um, list.fedoraproject.org, list.fedorahosted.org, list.pagar.io, so we could add list.centos.org today if we wanted to. Okay. 
With, with, okay, so that's orthogonal to the mailman. Would there be any issues? Sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Would there be any issues with authentication, though? Uh, everyone's already like, uh, you don't have to use Fast to register to sign up for a mailing list. Um, if you want to, you can, but Mailman 3 does not, man our Mailman 3 deployment doesn't mandate it. Um, so list subscriptions basically work mostly the same way. I think the, if you want to do it without having an account, the, the, the email mode of doing the subscriptions has slightly changed a little bit. But if you are signing up through the web UI, then you have to sign in through FAS and that, or, or Google account or whatever. Like it's a multi SSO system, um, or you can just create a username and password. That also works too. Um, well, we should be able to bulk, like migrate the existing subscribers and everything. I think yes, that is possible because yeah. we did it before with other lists. Yeah. So in theory, if we do this right, there's no change for like from the point of view of somebody using the list now. The address remains the same. The subscribers remain the same. It's just a different plumbing. Well, actually, the list, the address does not stay the same. We can set up forwarding addresses for it but like mailman 3 has a requirement of namespacing all the lists so that means it would have to be list.centos so it'd be centos uh, devel at list.centos.org rather than centos devel at centos.org stuff oh, like I that see. i think that's fine we can have yeah, just that's yeah, right. except we break everybody's mail filters overnight so there's because we did had this problem before um in open susa we have a script that and a um a, uh, what's it called? Uh, some kind the mail MTA configuration that lets you like set up all the aliases super quickly to be able to handle the old address and then redirect to the new one transparently and vice versa. So um, I can just ask the OpenSUSE Heroes team for that script and we can oh. we can reuse that for that migration for CentOS. So I don't consider that particularly a blocker, but I people do need to be aware that it is true the, that the, old, the address will change. It is true that this will impact filters on the on the user side for some folks. Like I know I have filters for this set on yeah. the on the list address, so that will definitely trigger. So if we go through this way, we definitely need to communicate this widely. Yeah, oh, sure we need to. yeah that, um, that's the reason I'm bringing it up is because yeah. you know th there is some messaging that's going to have to be involved. Yeah, but yeah, we don't yeah. necessarily have to break people sending and receiving, but filters but, will definitely change. Yeah. But this is going to happen regardless, right? Because whether we go, whether we use Fedora's uh, instance or do our own instance, we We're can't stay on Mailman issue. two. And this sound, yeah. this is this is a requirement of Mailman three. So it's, yep. it's Mailman three either way. Yeah, right. this is the I thing think we, we might need to. Do. Yeah. All right. So, quick question: Is this a technical issue that we need to contact first the Fedora infra, or is this a Sean needs to ask Justin if we can? use their stuff if we can join them both probably both probably but i suspect I mean, that justin will be an act immediately and then yeah. it's just talk to kevin and figure out how to okay. how to strategically strategize yeah. the move but who do we want to assign this to i'm trying to get rid of all the fact that we have a lot of unassigned tickets so i don't want us to discuss it and not assign it to somebody i would say sean let's get formal alignment with justin and assuming okay. everybody's on board with it, then we can move to an implementation plan. Sorry. Um, I, I was going to say, um, Red Hat doesn't have an opinion beyond, we will be shocked if this is not an immediate, yes, this is completely fine. Um, so I would like to know that. I was going to say it might be more expedient for the project to assign this to whomever's going to actually need to do the execution of the implementation plan. That may very well be Sean because this should truly be a non-issue no, um, with it getting more. both the resources and the understanding. Yeah, so I think resource-wise, we'll need help from Fabian on the CentOS Infra side on to like export the, the existing configs and all of that. And then we'll need the help from Kevin on the Fedora side to spin up the new system. Um, and then Michelle and I are working on the yeah. mailman stack packaging as well, so uh, with Davida. So, the three of us are 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 on the loop in terms of making sure everything's ready to go on that front. Yeah, I, I can take the technical side of this, Amy, if you want, and and I can help coordinate that. Okay. Yeah. Um. So my suggestion to you, Davida, is going to be then make an infra ticket, and let's go ahead and put a link to the infra ticket in a comment for this one, 
So this will be the overseeing and then we'll have an in for ticket underneath. Yep. Sounds good. All right. We will need both CentOS Infra and Fedora Infra tickets for this, by the way. Yeah, that's why I'm saying if we put the links to the tickets that are involved in the one, we'll have a better chance of keeping track yep. of stuff. I just don't want it to get lost, kind of like where we just had a discussion that we had discussed something that we think there's an Infra ticket and we can't find it. Okay. Um, 120 was Alexandra's proposal for the CentOS integration SIG, which I think everyone on the mailing list is in favor of. And I want to say Josh agreed to be the... Uh, Davide. Yeah, Davide? I, I offered to sponsor Davide. on the on the issue and I'm, I'm happy to help with that. I think this is great and it's something we, we should really do and like support because uh, it aligns very well with what we've discussed in the past at the board level and in general who would like to see for the project so okay i knew someone in the channel had said that they would step in and be the liaison so if it was you perfect um go back to the other window oh yep you even put a comment in there Duh. okay um so i'm gonna assign this to you davida um uh, i think we need to formally approve this yeah as a board so then alexander can move on and actually get this panel yeah. and do the and do the things but like i said i'm trying to make sure we don't why can i not find you the uh, dikavalka i think yeah. is okay. using that one. and being that we do have quorum all those in favor of moving forward with centos integration sig yes 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 all righty excellent uh, Celeste, did you raise a hand in approval or for comments? It's... For approval, because I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to get lost in the uh, emojis that are flying across my screen. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Or is there anyone opposed? And this would have corrected that problem anyways. And there's no one opposed. All righty. So we will go forth with the CentOS integration. SIG sponsored by Davida. Um, when you said that made me laugh, like sponsored by Daffodil, brought to you awesome. by your friends. At I don't think you want to finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to suggest, Sean, you didn't put anything in your architect updates. Um, well, I suppose I didn't. No, you did not. And I know there is a bunch of SIG issues we want to discuss there. So I'm going to suggest we skip down to your update. And then, um, then I think we'll do to any other business because I think that's important to discuss. And then we'll go back and discuss the um, issues that we've had outstanding. I had two things, which one of them was the, the SIGs and the other one was the um, the events thing. So um, I guess I'll hit SIGs first. I made a, so we had all the issues and so I organized them into, an, into a, a hack and I've tried to go through this week and um, get a handle on them again. Um, and what I have in the hack and are at the very top six, I think, obvious keep. And the stuff under discuss doesn't mean it's not an obvious. I think there are things. There's just like some. Sometimes the things under discuss are like just uh, you know some T's need crossed and dot, I's need dotted or whatever. Um, um, but I think we can probably just have a really easy like consensus vote on automotive K mods, hyperscale cloud, alt images, storage. The the info on those is updated and correct as far as everyone is telling me and um, they're active. So we can probably just close those six issues if the board's okay with that. Yes. Anybody cool. object? That's the easiest way to do it. Okay. So automotive K, K mods, hyperscale cloud, alt images, storages, storage, and our new SIG which of course we don't have a ticket for. Right, yeah, um, I don't have, I mean, you know, I guess I'll start up an annual review on, 
Well, we've got two. We've got the ISA, right? And then now we'll have um, um integration. Thank you. Jesus, my head. Um so like come next year, which is already coming up, it's closer to next year than it is to the beginning of this year. Um, if we do a review thing again, then I would include them on it. But uh, given how late these are finalizing, it might not be worth doing one at the beginning of next year. Um, and then um, trying to get my, so I think the hard question is, I guess for the, the ones under discuss, I, I kind of need to bring conversations to the board and maybe I should just bring those individually as uh, on the mailing list or something. Um, and some of them, like I said, are just like, they just have to get a couple things in order, but they're active and doing stuff. What do we want to do? I have four that I think are just not active, um, which is alt architectures, config management, public CI and feature request. Have we retired SIGs before? Is there a process? Do we, I don't even no. know. We have okay. talked about this. Uh, I remember we discussed this when we did that face-to-face -face in Boston uh, mm -hmm. man, a while ago at this point. Uh, I do not know if we ended up writing some like formal process or whatever for this. Um, I think we should have a formal process. We, yeah, we should absolutely have something. The question is, do we make one on the spot and then formalize it later or do we try to come to consensus on formalizing something and then apply it um, like it seems pretty obvious that like at least to me from a quick look as you said that these four are not active and um but like, so I guess there's, there's a technical side and there's a non-technical side. The technical side is tearing down the, the unused resources so they don't cause confusion, waste stuff, uh, mm -hmm. removing access, um, and like marking in a way, in a clear way, like having a page somewhere for like archive six or whatever to making it clear this is not active anymore. Uh, but then there's also the, like, how do we notify the people that were ostensibly in the SIG if there are any? Uh, do we have a channel for them to voice objections or whatever? Um, well, and we, we, we could tag people in the issue, basically, with a message saying that the SIG is, is marked for retiring, and we could then uh, put uh, some links there. And uh, what else? Uh, and I think, yeah, we need to do some cleanup on the infra side for CBS and other things, too, so the content is unsynced from Mirror and things like that as well if it was ever content uh, generated. So yeah, I think we, we should just check with Infra what they think in terms of uh, procedures they should apply when we retire SIG. Yeah, the one thing that I think is like actually important is cleaning up the FAST group because uh, that's what actually grants people access to do things. Uh, everything else is nice to have and something we should definitely do, but it's, I don't think it's urgent or anything. So yeah. what we did with Cloud Sig when we revitalized it, I emailed everyone who was listed in the group. And at the time, this was pre-merger because um, it also made it easier to merge it once we cleaned it out. So we can definitely contact all those people. Um, if we can put them in the tickets to be notified, that would be good too. Um, and one other thing that could be an interesting endeavor to do here is also to run through how to onboard a SIG, but in reverse. So yep. we can see if there's any gaps. Now, some of these are old, so they may predate a lot of stuff. And we might ha find out there's a bunch of stuff that we don't have in the current SIG, you know, instructions that used to be important two years ago, three years ago, and those will not be caught. Um, but I think that might be a good way to help us to make the documentation for retiring one so we don't, in theory, miss any steps of, okay, we asked them to create a channel. We asked them to do this, so then we know to remove that channel, to remove that repo, and so on and so forth. Now, I will say one thing on the virtualization, which is under discuss. For some reason, Cloud Sig's channel got forwarded to the Vert channel. So, should we choose to remove Vert, we need to convert that channel back to Cloud. 
Oh, you mean on IRC? Um, I don't know who requested it, but when we were working on the matrix stuff, ran into that. I feel like that's something we, you can ask the um, the IRC admin, um, whose name escapes me right now, but like the person that was helping us on that other ticket. Yeah. Uh, and they could probably figure out what happened there because that's a, a, a namespace level configuration, I think. I don't think it's a channel level thing. Yeah, I'm not sure where it happened or even when it happened. I just happened to notice when I went back in. Uh, I day. vaguely remember uh, there being a big like cleanup reshuffling of CentOS IRC channels maybe a year or so ago. Um, it, it was in like the last two months that it but, happened. Oh, okay. No, then, then I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. then we should follow up. It, it could have. It could have been a mistake or it could have been some like, miscom thing. Yeah, so um, um, we don't want to get rid of the infra channel. The infra group is active, whether there's still a SIG or not. Um, yeah, that's kind of the question. Infra kind of, I mean, it obviously happens, but um, there doesn't seem to be a, a there's no like public reporting or public meetings. So. Yeah, so there's, there's two things, two groups, I think, that are a bit odd. And one is infra where clearly there's stuff happening, but it's not really structured as a SIG, despite, I guess, nominally being a SIG. The other one is documentation, which has resources and a mailing list, but I don't think was ever formalized as a SIG. Yeah. Um, and like, we should clarify that however we end up clarifying it. Um, Uh, for infra, I guess we should just ask the infra people what they prefer here. Like, we should probably just ask Fabian what what he thinks makes sense for him, and then. Well, and it also, is there ability for non red hatters? I mean, I think you do, and Neil does. You help with infra, right? Uh, no, we're well, to. we're not allowed to. So non red hatters, the only red hatters have access to the actual infra stuff. Okay. So, like, we we help in the sense that we chime in on tickets and. Harass Fabian and IRC, but okay, that's the extent of it. Uh, I would love for there to be a way for non reddit people to help, but I think that's a much wider conversation. Okay, so then it might make sense to retire the infra sig, as there is no way for. Um, one thing know. though that I know that's for a fact is that the infra sig has build tags in CBS that they use for stuff that are tied to this, so they might need this for technical reasons. Okay. Um, well, if, also, if the work still exists um, and the group still exists, it, it seems relatively minor to, for the SIG to still exist. I, we do have a few SIGs that are sort of oddities compared to the others in that they don't produce, you know, uh, software layers on top of on top of CentOS, but that's several, and and we've always had some like that. So I think it's okay. Um, I think. I yeah. think the real problem isn't what it's producing or not producing, but the social aspect of it, right? Like pre Red Hatty CentOS, um, the InfraSig, I think, was the place where people actually worked on the build system code and bringing things up and whatever. But post that, right, like the move from Plague, nobody should care about its soul. It's horrible. Um, but like the move from Plague to Koji, um that was that was also that coincided with essentially a lockdown of the infrastructure um brian has something to say yeah, Bex is next I, I believe the better brian mr stinson is working on a proposal that will impact the infrasigs resources and other pieces so it may be worth deferring this until he can come to a meeting and talk to us and we can put that on the agenda for next month um okay. and find out if like, I don't want us to, to take an action that we then immediately either have to reverse or we effectively undo with a new action in the following month is, is what I'm advising. Okay. okay. That, that's Thanks good. for the answer. Yeah. Um, what about docs? Do we want to formalize docs? I mean, Sean, you're the one that does most of the work there. Do you think this will be useful for you? Is it a thing? Um. Sure. I the the SIG label is uh, a little bit uh, short. I think you know what you find in like Fedora is that like not everything is under is under the SIG structure, right? There's like a docs team, but they're not a SIG. 
Um, but like if we're pursuing that, then like, you know, promo doesn't have to be a SIG and artwork doesn't have to be a SIG. You know, there's no, they're not producing anything technical. They're just teams doing stuff. Um, docs can go on with or without the SIG structure and it already has a fast group that indicates it's a SIG and it has a mailing list. So um, I suppose insofar as we are using SIGs as a way of blessing team activity, um, having a blessing of it would probably help some in encouraging activity and maybe getting some mind share. Sean, it's is, not necessary to get work done. Is messaging the docs ticket? No, uh, doc, there's not there's docs not a ticket for docs. It's okay. yeah. something that came up on the list and in separate conversations okay. that I just it just came to mind to me by looking at this. Okay. Um, but I am writing notes on. Uh, we should make a separate ticket, I suppose, for docs. Uh, just saying, like, formalizing status of the docs SIG. And then either vote on this now or record the vote, or if we want, we can defer and do it the next session. But I would be for just doing this now and getting it over with. I, I like having a place where we can reach out to a team that is doing a thing. Um, my, my example is how many times have we deferred, oh, you should talk to Infra about that. Here is their issue tracker. And so having having a place to do that is very helpful to my mind. Yeah, and I know whenever we've needed anything from docs, it's send an email to them. Like for wiki access, used to send them an email to the mailing list. All right, so we still need to discuss that group. Um, and there seems to be more work on those include, and I added docs onto that list. Do we want to make a vote on the ones Sean has under retire, or do we want to wait till there is documentation for a process? I'd like to wait till we've got documentation for a process, if nothing else that will force us to actually write it. Would you like to take an action for that? Yes, I can take an action for that. Excellent. Thank you. Because you are our best in the wordy wordy department. Um, Picking on the liberal arts, dude. <laughs> it's, he writes I, I really well. To do it. So I may as well, like, I spent time learning how to do this. I may as well do it. All right, and I'm going to suggest it's, make a ticket for that, Pat, and take ownership of the ticket for the documentation. It's worth noting, I think, that um, I think our, our still our definitive list of what our actual SIGs at this point is the wiki page, which has been archived. So... Um, because sigs.centos.org just lists the sigs that happen to have docs up, but that's not all of them. Um, and it would be good if the front page, if that actually just told us about all the sigs and happened to also link to the docs, but that's a another can of worms. And that might also be, you know, discussion for those tickets that are under discuss. If you would like to remain a sig, you need to put something up on sigs.centos.org your documentation so that also puts a little onus on them to show that they're active in that regard um i put in the chat a link to a ticket i just made for the docs sig um that we can add to that thing and that we can also use to record um our decision on that yep i'm adding it in okay uh, uh, I put it on Sean's list page. Yeah, it's 121. I just put the link yep. in the chat. Yep, yep, that's where I grabbed it from. Um, do we want to vote on this one now, or do we want to do it another time? Let, let's do it next meeting. I don't it's too urgent. So okay. we have to figure yep. Yeah, we are 46 minutes in, and we do have one other topic that's important. So. We will move forward from SIG discussion and go to any other business unless someone has something that they would like to discuss still on the SIGs. 
Is there anything you wanted to say about the event, uh, Sean? Or? Yeah. Did you want to do any other topics or oh, events do things first? Or okay. Do your events first. Okay. So I I sent a document um, to the board, um, which is maybe maybe too long. So I'll get the didn't read. Um, basically, the gist of it is, uh, you know, we we've did this rebranding to the Connect, um, and tried to bring a lot of contributors to the uh, two places we've had it, um, which is the one that we've historically had, is, which is at FOSDEM, but then also at DevConf US, and then DevConf US disappeared, and then um, and then we went to Flock. Um, and I've, I've looked at, um, we've talked about doing this format at other conferences, doing three or four of them a year, and I've kind of looked at other events and which ones could be good host events. Um, scale has always been high on my radar, but it's like three weeks after FOSDEM, and that's really hard. Um, and so what I've put together is, is a suggestion that we focus on um, CentOS Connect at FOSDEM as our main contributor conference. That is our, you know, in, in, in Fedora terms, that is our flock. And we do one a year, just as Fedora does one flock a year. It's where we try... We put all of our resources in to try to get as many of our contributors there as we can so we're not diluting it across multiple places. Um, and then doing that at lots of other events doesn't scale when everybody has um, reduced travel budgets and et cetera. Um, but I still want to be present at these events. I think it's nice to host things at them. It's really good for Mindshare. It's really good for... Um, just getting in front of people and talking to people. And so what I'm proposing is I'm kind of looking at like, you know, historic dojos, which were like show up with a couple people and give some presentations, some cool shit you can do, right? So um, can we roll in to uh, scale to various like Linux fests, uh, developer conferences, places where there are, you know, Linux users, people who are potential CentOS users, um, and go in with like a half day uh, format where we do a kind of a canned overview of CentOS stream, SIGs, whatever. Any one of us could deliver this thing if it's kind of, you know, a, a canned presentation and we know how to do it. And then a networking social and then a um, some sort of workshop, like a two hour workshop. And there's a, a variety of these we can do. Um, Carl George has already has done the Apple packaging and it would fit well into this. There's a lot of other things I think you could do and you can tailor it to which what's the audience of the particular event that you're you're latching on to, you know, so um, so that's the somewhat short version of it, I suppose. And then the other question is what our presence is at, at Flock, because I think everyone agrees that it was very good for CentOS to be at Flock and why the heck haven't we been at Flock all along um, and we should continue to have a a official presence there. Um, it's just a question of what what the format of that is um, and what the branding of it is, I suppose. And I think it's also important that we invite them to connect. Yes. So we will that, have cross pop, pop the pollination in both locations where we can invite them and they have a track or whatever it ends up being. We have a track at theirs. Um, and that's going to help us with cross collaboration between the two teams, which I think is a good thing. Um, My preference. I'll put out there the name for the thing at Flock to be collab, keeping with the C name. Um, but, and then Sean has played with, I think, CentOS College or something like that. No, Class classroom. College is far yeah. too serious. <laughs> Although I kind of like that. Major. Too. But that yes. would work. We were, we were running out of C uh, C names, and that one would work. College would work for um, the big one. Mm -hmm. But I really do like the idea of those half-day events. We used to do them as a day and a half, actually, for OpenStack, where we called it the Upstream Institute, where we brought people in and we taught them about the governance and the different projects, and we set them up with their getting the Garrett. And the hope was actually that they would get a first kind of commit in while we were working with them. So there's a lot of value in that type of event to distribute information. This is our project. This is what it's all about. These are the pieces to it. And also helping people get it set up so that they can contribute if something comes up. So, and a lot of 
operators don't necessarily know that they're allowed to contribute to open source projects. They don't think to, they don't know, they, they know how to do their own Git and you know, their own CVS or whatever they're using, but helping them you know, learn the process and the procedures. I mean, with OpenStack, it was Garrett, which is a little off the wall, but I think is a whole lot easier than pull requests. Um, but, you know, making, you know, giving them the confidence that they can get something in if they find something. And that is one of the things we have been working on is to try to make it easier for people to contribute. So. Yeah, for Flock in particular, my preference would be to have a, a, a track at Flock that is either CentOS or even better, I think, would be having a, um, I, I don't know how to call it, but like a like CentOS community thing, but like basically making it clear that it's open to like everybody in this space, so like CentOS and the rebuilds and RHEL and all of that. Um, and I think that would fit nicely in the spirit of like, encouraging cross collaboration of flock and that's why i kind of like the name collab yeah I, I think something like that would work really well the other thing i was thinking was uh something in the spirit of like you know on this course now there's like this our neighbors section that fedora made so something in the spirit of like fedora neighbors could be interesting maybe all right and i do want to put a timer of one minute on this so that we can get to the, any other business um but yeah, the and I'm all for doing the we discussed this before face to face as well, but I'm all for doing the events. Uh, I think that's a great idea and we should we should definitely invest on it. Does anyone else want to say something real quickly before we go on to how to report bugs on CentOS stream with Jira? Because everyone loves Jira. Oh God. <laughs> um, who actually added this? I did because I think nobody, not everybody is familiar with the whole thing. So I said, let's do a screenshot and remind people they can report bugs. All right, Thomas, this is your topic. So Where it was you... just, it was just to, to remind people that uh, you can create tickets on stream uh, directly in Jira now, Bugzilla being phased out. So for people reporting, uh, I just wanted to put a reminder, and a nice screenshot. So there's not much to discuss. Uh, um, I think we will follow up if there are issues. There's already some discussion uh, on the mailing list. I don't think we need any other channel at this time. But uh, yeah, that's it, I think. The one thing I would say regarding the Jira stuff, uh, like as, as centers, I think we should make a concerted effort to make sure that the bug reporting experience for contributors doesn't unduly regress from what was before. Um, and like I, I've been reporting things as I noticed them, but for example, one thing that came up recently was that if you file a bug against distribution, it's in Jira, it's automatically marked as private as it used on Bugzilla, but the act of marking it private makes it invisible for everyone, including the submitter. And like, that's not a great experience, obviously. And that's, that's the kind of thing that I think would be valuable to get fixed sooner than later so that there's like at least rough parity of experience and features. Bex, is that something you can assist with getting permission for? I, I told Josh about this already and I think Josh okay. was looking into it. I, I, okay. This was just okay. an example. I don't think there's an action needed, um, but yeah. Okay. If we, if Josh obviously sits on the, the board as Josh, he happens to have access to the right folks to do his employment uh, to work on this. But if we need Red Hat to act, Sean and I can certainly try and take something in um, and see what can be done. But right now, I'd like to just rely on Josh's graciousness for being willing to do this. Okay. Yep. And it might be nice. That, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it might be nice if there was a, not necessarily like a gripe bucket, but if there was a unified place, we could say, hey, I found a weird thing in Jira, send it there. Because like, I can just email Josh and he's going to read it because he knows my name. But um, for other folks, it might be nice to have a, you know, Jira sad face email. Yeah, I brought this up before that it'd be nice to have a channel that isn't just Josh private email where people can raise this and ideally get like some kind of engagement, which can just be, thank you for your report. We're looking into this. And then we decided to not fix it or to fix this, but like 
something that doesn't just like fall into the void. Bex. This feels like something that would be great to go through the infrasig because they would deal with this part of that as well, or at least have access to the correct teams to get the information to them. Is JIRA under the infrasig? JIRA would be adjacent to the infrasig, but those folks should know who their technical counterparts are on the other side of the RIJ initiative inside of Red Hat. Got it. Um, and I, it, I know this sounds terrible, but that feels like it, and this is more Brian than Red Hat here, but um, that feels like the right kind of a place to collect those issues in a publicly viewable domain so that somebody go, hey, somebody already sad faced this. Um, and then if that becomes overwhelming, I'm sure the InfraSig would be happy to help us arrange for a better location place. Okay. That works for me. Yeah, as, as long as the, the infra folks are fine with that, I'm I'm all for it. I just want a place that we can use for this. And this seems reasonable. I agree. I, I will own that as far as I know, none of them are actually on this call this evening as uh, several folks were traveling this week. But unless we think there's a lot of problems out there, I think we're safe to start there and then redirect from there as needed. Um, I don't know, that's just, I don't have anything else to say, sorry. And Neil's comment about the deactivation of community counts in 90 days, I'm assuming is a licensing issue. Yes, that, that is my understanding. Hurt. And and my understanding is that that is something that is happening um, in all instances. I may be incorrect on that, but I don't think even Red Hat or accounts are necessarily preserved after 90 days of inactivity. But either way, I don't know that that's something we're going to be able to affect a change on. But we could have documentation on it that people will need Correct. to reactivate their account so that we'll yeah. have that too needs to be documented. Talked about documentation and notifications and possibly adjusting the time in the past, in past meetings. I don't know if any of those are likely to happen anytime soon. And uh, Bex, I know we had JIRA training for engineers internally. Is that something we could maybe deliver to the community? Maybe, uh, maybe in Brussels, maybe just virtually? I, I don't see why we couldn't. Um, mm -hmm. I, I am not personally qualified to deliver that training. Um, what I would say is that I think the folks in the infrastructure are, again, going to be the most able to identify the individuals who would be qualified to give that training or to review those docs. Like, I'm not trying to just throw that wonderful group of people under a bus here, but I really do feel like they are a fantastic interface to these things that are mechanical as opposed to policy. Like the 90 day thing is a policy thing. I've seen some conversation on it. I don't think we're going to get a change in that regard. Um, I'm happy to go forward and try and get a formalized statement on that, but that's what I would expect the answer to be. Whereas the rest of this, like, hey, we, we need a doc that says, how do you do this? That feels more mechanical and something that the Emperor folks, if they can't do themselves, again, they're adjacent to the right teams. Yeah, and also from reading Neil's comments, if we could, now I don't know if it exists. It's been years since I've been the admin, of JIRA, thank God. Um, but if there's a notification, your account is about to expire. If that could be, I, I think that would be there. perfectly. That that would be great. Again, if there is a setting, the infra folks it. should know who to raise that to in JIRA administration at Red Hat. And if they don't, I'm happy to go try and find out. But I'm going to be coming at that problem from I'll say left field. So okay. it and would I don't be, know if, if you'll excuse not. the baseball analogy, uh, ba yeah. baseball analogy. So again, I think those folks are in the right place to do that. Okay. But speaking as Brian, I don't want everybody to do what I have to do. There's a certain U.S. government website that I have to remember to log into every 90 days or it kicks me out. And so I have a to-doist every 80 days, go log into the thing. So yeah, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do that to people. That All would right. be nice. We are one minute over time, but does anyone have anything else they'd like to discuss? You can keep going if needed. All right, I think this was a very productive meeting. We have the SIGs to carry over, but I think um, 
we'll start with Pat's documentation and that'll give us you know, a procedure to go ahead and retire anything we decide to. Um, I do like the idea of adding all the SIG members into the ticket to notify them. So I think we have some good action items out of it today. Thank you all for attending. And I'm going to mute against the barking dog. Night all. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Thank you all.